At this time, the ICE team is at the pad on the mobile launcher platform conducting their final inspections of the vehicle, looking for any indications of potential ICE buildups following the tanking of the 500,000 gallons or so of cryogenic reactants. This is Shuttle Launch Control at T minus three hours and holding with just about 10 minutes remaining in our hold at this time. It's about six minutes after midnight Eastern time and we have live pictures of our crew for mission STS-84 in their suit up room. Our mission commander, Charles Precourt, is on his third flight having served as mission specialist of STS-55 and then as pilot of STS-71. Uh, that was the first space shuttle mission to dock with the Russian space station, and now he'll serve as commander of this, the sixth mission to dock with the space station Mir. Uh, he is a colonel in the uh, Air Force, and next to him, of course, is our uh, pilot, Eileen Collins. Uh, she is preparing for her second shuttle mission. She has logged over 4,000 hours and various aircraft and she was selected as an astronaut in 1990 and first flew aboard mission STS-63 in 95 uh, as the first female to pilot the space shuttle and this again will be her second piloting mission. Uh, the crew members are being assisted with their launch and entry suits by suit technicians from KSC and JSC. Edward Liu is preparing for his first mission into space And on the other side of the room, uh, another one of our mission specialists preparing for his first flight, Carlos Noriega. No. <laughs> Michael Full. This is a special mission for him. He's flown three times before, but on this particular flight, of course, he will be staying on board the Mir space station. And Elena Kondakova, a Russian cosmonaut, making her first trip into space aboard the shuttle. However, she has spent nearly half a year in orbit aboard the space station Mir. Uh, Kondakova represents the Russian Space Agency. Uh, she was selected as a cosmonaut in 1989. And Jean-Francois Clairvoy is preparing for his flight today. This will be his second mission aboard the space shuttle. Again, the crew waving, uh, making their final goodbyes to employees at Kennedy Space Center. Mission Commander Charlie Precourt with pilot Eileen Collins, Jean-Francois Clairvoy, Carlos Noriega, Edward Liu, Elena Kondakova, and Michael Cole. These launch pads are about four miles from the vehicle assembly building, and over the next few minutes, engineers will be making final checks of the sound suppression water tank. Uh, they'll be verifying that the tank is topped off to proper levels. Uh, this particular tank holds about 300,000 gallons of water and on command just a few seconds before liftoff. The tank is completely emptied as water flows through the sound suppression system onto the mobile launcher platform deck at a rate of about um, 100,000 gallons every 10 seconds. Uh, in addition, no other technical issues are being addressed by the management team at this time. The engineers in the firing room uh, are manning their consoles, maintaining a, a close watch on all aspects of the vehicle. Uh, again, no problems are being discussed. Uh, here we are at uh, 1235 uh, a.m. Eastern Time and everything continues to look good for launch in just under four hours.
this picture is this view is a uh, shot taken from the 195 foot level the crew have the crew has arrived on this level and they'll be taking turns getting into the vehicle of course their next step is to cross the orbiter access arm on this level that leads over to the vehicle the orbiter access arm of course can support the weight of all the crew but they'll be taking uh, their time as only one crew member can enter the vehicle at a time Again, everything is progressing smoothly at this point in the count. There are no concerns. Uh, weather is going to be no issue for us. And no technical issues are being addressed at this time. Uh, managers and engineers in the firing room are relaxed and prepared to allow the uh, vehicle to perform. Jim, the MMT is working. No issues. You're cleared to launch. Copy that. And Atlantis, uh, everything has come together. So we're ready to go. You guys have a good flight, good mission. We'll see you back here on Saturday a week. And our companies and to the whole team, to our international partners uh, around the world, we're ready to go, and we thank for all your hard work. And MTD, you're clear to launch. Copy. Zoom on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. And we're at T-minus nine minutes and counting, and the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA Test Director John Guidi is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands as Atlantis is less than nine minutes away from launch on a mission to the Mir space station to retrieve astronaut Jerry Leninger, who has been in space now for the past four months. And the orbiter access arm is now being retracted away from the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the orbiter and it can be returned to position within seconds if need be. ATC, PLT, three gray cockpits. Next, the three main engines will be gimbaled as a final test before launch. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood is being slowly retracted away from the top of the external tank. Everything looks good and we're cleared for launch today. No problems are being reported from the vehicle or the crew. T minus two minutes and counting. T minus fifteen. Eleven. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. We have a go for main engine start. Four. Three. Two. One, we have booster ignition and liftoff of the space shuttle Atlantis, maintaining America's constant presence in space. Houston now controlling the side of Atlantis. Uh, yeah, we just did one of our programs. Roger, roll it, ladies. Echoing the words of Yuri Gagarin on his launch 36 years ago, Commander Charlie Precourt puts Atlantis into the roll, heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Mike Fall headed to the Mir space station. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Charlie Precourt on the flight deck of Atlantis, joined by pilot Eileen Collins, flight engineer Carlos Noriega, and mission specialist Jean Francois Clairvois. Down on the mid deck, mission specialist Ed Liu, Elena Kondakova, and Mike Full beginning four months in space. One minute, 40 seconds into the flight, Atlantis traveling at 2,300 miles per hour, already 17 miles downrange from the launch site, 20 miles in altitude. 15 seconds away from solid rocket booster separation. That will be commanded by the general purpose computers through the master events controller on board. Booster officer confirms a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance is converging on all three main engines, now gently steering Atlantis for a precise keyhole in space for main engine cutoff. 
Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. Lance, we copy. You have a go for the ET photo DTO. Roger that. I'm going to make no arms one. Atlanta, Houston, you'll have a great uh, first full day on orbit. The uh, planning folks are going to hand it over to the uh, rendezvous pros who will start getting you ready for tomorrow. And that'll be the uh, Orbit One team. And uh, the next voice you hear will be Chris Hadfield. Okay, Bill. Well, we're sure are off to a great start. Thanks to all your help down there. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning. We're uh, all up and running about and getting things done. Things look really great. Thanks for all your help. Bon, I've opened the airlock. Now we have to do this one. We have to remove. Uh, let's see how we can do it best. Take a seat. And Atlantis Houston, we're on board looking into the space hab. Hello, Jean Francois. Yes, we do, and I'll check with the PI. Okay, would you like me to hold off on stowing it in the incubator? Stand by. Atlanta Space Hab for RMD, uh, the PI got a good look, uh, thanks you, and says you have a go to go ahead and place that in the incubator. Roger. Go ahead. Uh, 
May I put a question to the commander, Charles Precourt? Uh, what's it like having a British astronaut among you? Is he made of the right stuff? He's warning me that I better say yes to that one. <laughs> Mike's a great asset to the NASA program, and uh, he brings a, a load of experience from a lot of different areas to us. Uh, and, you know, he kind of uh, hinted at the fact that the benefits of an international space station is that the fact that we bring together the talents of many different nations, and, in fact, many different cultures. And new ideas bring new ways of doing things, and we discover new things together. So, yeah, Mike is a great asset. We're going to miss him when we close the hatch, but we're glad that he's representing us when we do. Okay, well, good morning, Bill. By the sounds of that, it must be time to rock and roll. And uh, go ahead with your comments. Miss Houston, we have a nice down link of Mir. All right. Using the binocs, we could pick out the solar arrays and everything. Thanks for the update, Eileen. Thank 
Did you read this uh, message about if the lighting conditions should be good unless we get delayed? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know I, got, why do you I got a note. Get the color of it now. It's turning orange. And we have contact and capture. And last, uh, contact one more time. The pressurization uh, equalization is about over. Good loud and clear, Charlie. We see that. We're going to uh, lose you to the ZOE in a little under two minutes. And we'll have you again solid at 16 minutes past. Landis Houston, we're with you on the west, and we're looking at you in the hatch, Charles. Okay, Chris. Uh, if the video looks good to you, we're ready to open. Looks great and uh, sounds fine as well. You have a, you have a go. Okay.
Come on in. Houston, we got Elena coming in with the traditional bread and salt. Jerry's going to bring up the, the trail with Carlos here. He's going to show us how to fly through the mirror. Go ahead, Jerry. Let's take a log jam up ahead. Welcome, everybody, back in Houston. Man, it's great to have the shuttle crew aboard. Great yeah, to see you, ready? Jerry. Thank you. Sasha's going to come join us in the, at the table here, and uh, we'll say hello to the folks at the soup also. I think Jerry might want to say something to you guys there in the control center. You did a great job. Appreciate you getting the crew up here like you did, and Charlie just brought her right in, steady as can be. It was great to see him, and it's going to be a great celebration here. Jerry, it's uh, great to see you, and uh, we're looking forward to having you back at Ellington. Houston, if someone just wants to push and hold the button, it's a pretty good area, Mike. Okay, Chris, we're doing that, and uh, we've got one other gift for Sasha and uh, Vasily. We're making them honorary 84 members with a little hat that uh, shows our patch. It's a new Sasha. It's a new General. Plus he wanted to know if the little symbol on the hat meant that he was an admiral, but we prefer general in the Air Force, of course. Since Vasi and I are both Air Force types, we'll just go with that. And for Jerry, we brought his pretzels along. give you a little tour of Mir. I'm Jerry Leninger, of course, and I'm in the base block where you see most of the pictures that come out of Mir. It's the table where we all gather to eat uh, when the time's available. We've got uh, quite a bit of gear. We have a little sleep cabin over this way. This is, happens to be the commander's sleep station. And he's got a little mirror. He's got some personal pictures, uh, pens, patches, Mirror 23 patch, for example, is decorating his walls. Got a CD player, little uh, tape players to relax and take life easy. One of the air generating systems is here, and also the CO2 uh, 
cleaning system is here, as long as a, with a uh, block threatening premises which takes out contaminants in the air. And all of those run in this module, and this is also a module where we're having some cooling leak problems, and we did some uh, repairs where we cut tubes and basically blocked them off with some plugs. And it's, as you can see, it's very difficult to work. Uh, the area has to get cleared. We had it totally cleared for about four weeks um, looking for the leaks, and it's very, very difficult to work back here. We're able to find one leak, but we still have some problems. So uh, Mike's going to have his hands full uh, working back here. Finding the leak is one thing, and then getting access to the leak is a different uh, ball game. But, and we'll back back out. By the way, the fire, I guess, is kind of interesting. People have heard about the fire. The fire was basically in this region here, with the flame shooting across this way. And therefore, as you can see where the camera is, is basically where I was at, and we had one other body in front of me. I was passing the fire extinguisher, uh, but we can only get one person in here to fight the fire because of the flame location. And uh, at that time, the other Soyuz was on the other side where progress is now docked. As you can see, it would have been very difficult to get through the flame itself to get to the uh, to one of the rescue vehicles. Uh, and it was very difficult to fight the fire because you could only get one body close enough to the fire itself. The commander's post right here, which is, of course, interesting. And Commander Vasily's here. You show. You And Vasily says hello to everybody. Doing a little work at the command post. Got his uh, scope down here, a couple of CRT tubes, enters a lot of different commands in this area. And over here is actually your uh, signalization port or your uh, panel that gives you all your caution and warning alarms. Okay, this table, very nice, soft Velcro, and I found this the most effective place to do work. If I had surface sampling or air sampling, I'd organize my work right here, put everything in nice order, and then fly to the place where I had to do the sampling. The shuttle is here. out of time. I just want to thank you all for your attention, and I hope you've got a feel for the space station uh, as we flew you through it. Uh, it's a pretty pleasant place to live when you can get a space to look like this. Charlie, uh, all five kits are still stowed in the AS-01. Okay.
first, uh, as they were columns, and only the first column for the second two rows. On uh, window B, they go into the second window uh, all the way across. And on C, it's all the way across the first, maybe one and a half uh, squares. And on D, it's uh, about a half a square across. And I'll try to show you the image here. But it doesn't look like it only need any more buffer solution. Crystal. Still crystal. Go ahead, Elena. We complete step 20.
Wish we were there. Charlie, uh, we're back with you now. We just had Tedris hand over. Did you call? Yeah, I was just saying, uh, not only is Florida having a beautiful night tonight, but all of the eastern U.S., we've still got the tip of Florida Peninsula in sight while we're over in New York. We see New York, Washington, all the way over to St. Louis, down to Atlanta, Memphis. All the cities are standing out just nice and clear. It's gorgeous out there. You're our window. Eileen's up here singing Lee Greenwood songs. And we copy. I'd just like to say that uh, this is a great day for us. It's a little bit sad, of course, because uh, the thrilling flight is coming to an end, and we're going to have to separate the vehicles here tomorrow morning, and uh, that'll be a bittersweet memory for us. We've had a great time getting uh, Mike ready to take over the place uh, and fill the big shoes that Jerry's left behind here with uh, a lot of progress being made on board. This picture on the screen right here is really heartwarming for everybody. You guys have done a fantastic job up there. Cecilia and Sasha, who have uh, become our wonderful friends, they've let us show their wonderful home, and we thank them very much for that. And with that in mind, we'd like to leave them a small gift from us. I'll hold the button down. It's a uh, T-shirt, one for each of them, with our name of our shuttle and our crew patch. Yeah. Cecilia? Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. And also one for Sasha. A memento, you can remember our flight. Yeah. And also from Phase 1, the Phase 1 folks would like to leave their thanks also with the uh, crew of Mir, with the Phase 1 show representing our program, which has been so successful. Houston, Rossi is ready to close the hatch, and uh, we wished him well. Had a great flight, and uh, just kind of sorry to see them close the hatch on ourselves here, but uh, we're sure they're going to do great. Okay, guys. We copy, thanks.
15 осталось. 
Pause the video. Charlie has called it a little more timely. Somebody's breaking off the lot. A bunch of scratchy stuff. Thanks, me. I've already bumped that auto work filing. So oh, you did? I okay. caught it right away. Okay. I was going to give you this. Somebody's break his ox a lot, and I hear yeah. a bunch of scratchy stuff. I think it's me. Starting to get a pretty good light show now. Look out the tail if you can, if you guys got mirrors. Yeah, I'm looking out with the uh, little camera here, and I can see the tail out there. Hmm. Well, not the tail, but I can see the flashes over the tail. The overhead's quite Hi. a show view. Is that nice? That is. Oh, it's the sunrise? See the sunrise? Yeah, yeah. I, I see it. Excuse me. The sun's going to overpower the glow here, so we didn't get a very long glow show. <laughs> 13,000. I see MLS. 12,000 feet. I heard him say nominal shoot deploy. Roger that. Feet. Land, okay. Body flaps trail. Check. Keep flying the instruments. 8,000 feet. There's a the runway. That looks really good. Yes, it does. It's dead on. Better than any SJ. 7,000 feet. 6,000 feet. Two pappies. Nominal aim point. Looking for 41% speed. Radar looks good. Radar looks good here. 4,000 feet. Looking good. Real good. Yes. 3,000 feet. Speed rate, 35. Pre flare on the gear. Okay. I see the pre flare and the gear is armed. 1,000 feet. Max speed was 305. 900. 800. About the ball bar. Okay, ball bar gear on time. The gear on time. Here goes the gear. See the gear moving? I hear it coming down. 200 feet. Ball bar. On the ball bar. 100 feet. Gear is down. 80, 70, 60. Long, 50, and long feet, 230 knots, 25 feet. Keep it coming down, 220, and 210, looking good. 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 200, touchdown, 187. Right, Three is opening. Derotating. She's coming. Nice. One, okay, down at one and a half. Okay. Load release. With Atlantis' speed now uh, down to 3,200 30, miles per hour, the uh, rudder on the tail of the orbiter is now active. The twin uh, sonic booms announcing Atlantis' arrival uh, in the landing area. Time to touch down, 3 minutes, 25 seconds. Atlantis now uh, on uh, glide slope and on center line, setting up for the final approach and landing to runway 33. The landing gear is now uh, down and locked. Main gear touchdown. And nose gear touchdown. Atlantis rolling out on runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center, completing 145 orbits of the Earth and a 3.6 million mile journey to deliver Mike Fole to the Mir Space Station. 
and also to return Jerry Leninger to Earth after four and a half months in space. We'll stop, and we'd like to offer congratulations on a flawless flight and a special welcome home, welcome home for Jerry. We have a go for uh, post-landing procedures on page 5-3. Well, we thank you all. You guys did a super job putting a great mission together. 